Hey there, Pammy. Hi, Brick. Um, we're just coming in early to let everybody know that this will be a two-parter. It's a two-parter. We have a wonderful guest. She's so fun. Um, we have Kennedy Bingham on this week. At Gown Eyed Girl. Yes. On TikTok and Instagram and everywhere. Yeah, she's super fun. So um, part one, we're going to get into how she got into becoming at Gown Eye Girl and also her wedding. Mm-hmm. Really fun stories. Um, and then, so since this is a two-parter, at the back end, Pam and I are going to hop in and say hello and give you some bridal breaks. We'll be back. Yes. So uh, let's get into part one. Something borrowed, something blue. Give us all your juicy news, sensational, irrational. It's Wedding Confessional. Welcome to another episode of Wedding Confessionals. I'm Brooke. And I'm Pam. And the only thing we love more than weddings is talking about weddings. We're going to talk to somebody today. We have a guest. We do. We're going to talk about weddings. Like we do. We do. That's what we're here for. Um, So (laughs) Pammy, you should introduce this guest. We kind of talked about her briefly before. Yes. So um, I don't know if everybody has listened to episode 104. If you haven't, I'm really mad at you. Go listen to episode 104. Brooke's mad. Yeah. Furious. Um, (laughs) It's a fun one. So my buddy, Laura Savali, she came onto the podcast and was telling us about being a COVID bride. And she mentioned that she got her dress and met um, this woman who is our guest today, Gown Eyed Girl and Kennedy Bingham. And yeah, she's here to join us today. We yeah. Have, we have Gown Eyed Girl with us. Yes, at Hello. Gown Eyed Girl. Hello. Hi, Kennedy. Welcome to the show. Happy to be here. So um, we briefly heard about the fact that you used to work in a dress shop. And then from there, it sort of catapulted your career into doing more Instagram influencing and having this really cool account about wedding gowns. Yes. And we want to get into that definitely at some point. But as tradition, we have to start from the beginning. We do. So I hope you're ready to go back in a time machine and think about (laughs) your childhood. Um, Because the the first question that we always ask our guests is... Um, yeah, we, we want to know when did you go to your first wedding? How old were you? Oh, that's a great question. I want to say, oh my gosh, I couldn't have been older than maybe like seven. And the only reason I remember this wedding is because they had this bar where you could crack open your own coconut and drink like coconut milk. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never had coconut milk before. This is going to be the best thing ever. They cracked a coconut for me. I drank it and I threw up. It was the nastiest thing I've ever (laughs) had in my entire life. (laughs) And... So that's my, like, I think that was my first wedding I ever went to. And then from there, I was like, God, weddings suck. (laughs) Oh, my God. You totally had me. You reeled me into that. And then I did not see that coming. That's hilarious. The sense memory for weddings for you is really traumatizing in your early childhood. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to think. Um, I've never had a fresh like cracked open coconut milk like you're talking about but I've had like coconut water from a can and I also yeah. think that tastes like garbage no because I can't do anything from the can but um when I last time I was in Hawaii yeah I had just like it's so funny I was at this Airbnb and this guy you know we put our bags in and the next thing we know there's a man up in our tree in our front yard and we're like um and you are and he's like oh this is what I do I just get the coconuts and I sell them and he's like you want one pulls out his machete he's like and I'm like uh okay and it was so good it's warm and it was delicious. This but- is the only story where you say I'm at an Airbnb and a stranger shows up with a machete and it ends well. Yes. <laughs> it's true. Like Welcome to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it was so awesome. Has your taste of coconut milk or um, coconut water changed at all? No, that was just when I learned I hated coconuts. I'm sure now if I went to a wedding and that was a thing, I'd be like, wow, this is so chic. Like, I love this. But seven-year-old me was like, this is stupid. Like, you couldn't have put out, like, a smoothie or something, like coconut water. And it was, like, in Pasadena. It wasn't like we were, like, 
in like by the beach or like at a tropical wedding. It was like a Pasadena ballroom. It just was aesthetically very an interesting choice. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, are you from the Los Angeles area? I am born and bred. Oh, right on. Yeah, you mentioned earlier before we started recording that you went to USC. So you're a Trojan. You're a true LA girl. Mm-hmm. I I am. I love LA. I have like lived in and around LA my entire life. My parents are also from LA. My dad was like a San Pedro surf bum. And yeah, like our whole family, my family went from Korea to Koreatown and just never left. Right on. Uh-huh. I love it. So besides being a seven-year-old hating coconuts at a wedding, (laughs) did you go to a lot of weddings as a kid? Like, do we have a big family out here in LA or were they mostly back in Korea? Um, I had a huge family. I have a huge family. They're still here. Um, (laughs) But I didn't go to like a ton of, like, I feel like a lot of people, they remember going to like friends' weddings and friends of friends. I went to a lot of like family weddings, but a lot of Korean weddings, I feel like are very different from Western weddings. Like I grew up with my uncle's wife borrowing a wedding dress from like her friend. And then that was the same wedding dress that his younger brother's wife wore to her wedding. Like we passed it around and it was like the dinner was a potluck. So I remember cooking for like my cousin's weddings where like my grandma was going to bring a dish and things like that. So coming into like a Western style wedding industry was like a shell shock. That's so fascinating. I know. I love that. I can't wait to figure out how you ended up in the wedding industry because so far yeah. nothing's telling me that you should. No, no. <laughs> yeah, no. My, I literally said, I think when I was eight, I used to say like, I'm never getting married. Like there's no point. My mom is not married. Like my, like everybody was kind of like, no, marriage is not necessary. We didn't have like huge weddings. I don't remember going to like really big weddings growing up and now like Weddings are all that I do. <laughs> That's so fascinating. So I guess I want to get into the business aspect, but I found out first that you said that you met your now husband before you got into the wedding industry. So I, I think we should keep going in chronological order, right? I think so. <laughs> first of all, what's his name? His name is Harrison. It's spelled with a G, G-E-R-S-O-N. Um, and he, it's, I would love saying what his name is because it's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we met when we were... I was 19 and he was 20. I was in my second year of college. Uh, We were both wild children and we were like, we are never getting married, never settling down. And we met each other and we were like, crap, this is it. This is it. Here we go. Um, We've been together ever since. He was a gerontology major. He actually got his doctorate in gerontology and I studied international relations with an emphasis in gender and national security. So my background was actually in like counter extremism and sex trafficking. Um, and so when I left college, every I thought I was going to go into the DOD or the DOJ, and I didn't want to because it sounded really depressing. And it was Trump's administration, and I didn't want to work under Trump's administration. So I wanted to pivot into something else. Uh, ended up doing finance, and that was fun, but not my thing. And then I was just trying to get into fashion. And so the only fashion place that was hiring at that time, because the market was so dense, was a bridal brand. So I was like, yeah, I could do bridal, whatever. Went in and that's like how I just fell in love with it. So yeah, the boyfriend came way before the wedding stuff. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. So I'm going to bounce around because you said something about all those different types of uh, industries that you could have worked in. What was, did you always have a love of fashion? Because you didn't always have a love of weddings. Yeah. So I've always really loved fashion. My, my family likes to joke. The only time me and my mom are not fighting is when we're shopping. So we've always <laughs> like bonded over fashion things. Like she used to take, like she used to work in New York part of the time. So I would go to New York and like walk around the Met and walk around like the costume Institute and everything like that. So we've always been really, really, both of us really interested in fashion. It's like one of the only things we never really argued about. Um, it just like, wasn't an option when I was growing up. I didn't think it was going to be something I was going to get into. Like I thought I was going to be a lawyer or anything like that. Like every other Asian child in America, um, and decided that like, I live in LA may as well give it a shot in my 20s and if it doesn't work out in my 30s I'll do something serious I like it there you go yeah so um what's the name of the company that you worked for in the bridal when you first started 
when I first started, they're no longer around. Oh. They're, they were called Flora Vare and they were a like bridal startup. Um, and they were just like taking on, they were expanding so much that they were taking on anyone uh, with no bridal experience or whatever. And I was like, that's me. And <laughs> they had this application. I remember the application was like an essay app, which I thought was so interesting because not a lot of jobs have that. Um, and my essay into them was 10 and a half pages long of like why like they would give you a different scenario and be like oh if you had this kind of bride like what would you how would you make them feel comfortable etc and like I was I had so much fun filling out the job application I was like dang I better get this job (laughs) otherwise like I'm gonna have to find another bridal brand to work for because this seems really fun amazing so at this point when you're in that situation of working for now that bridal place closed and then you end on to work with another bridal company it sounds like yeah were you engaged at that point or were you still single no I got engaged in May this um this past May okay and then we got oh not this past May sorry last May 2021 and then we got married November 2021 Um, so yeah, I was not engaged for a really long time, actually, until I switched over to influencing. So I was in bridal for maybe three years before I got engaged. And when you say you were in bridal, so basically you would work in a, a, like an actual like brick and mortar store and individually help people that had appointments and that sort of a thing. Yeah, I was, I was a stylist and then I managed a showroom and then I was an operations manager for a different showroom. So I like bounced around. Okay, cool. I'm sorry. The only like reference I have is say yes to the dress. I feel like such a corn. Yeah. Ball, but like, that's where my brain, I know it's like a, that's like a huge conglomerate. It's like a gigantic store. Yes. No, that's like the, the gateway drug into weddings is say yes to the dress. <laughs> it totally is. Yeah. So how, when you're in a store, when you are working in that sort of environment, how many dresses are you choosing? Like how, what is your selection in house when you're just like have a client and they walk in? Like how many dresses are you dealing with? Like in your max situation? Um, Cause it stresses it's, me out seeing those people yeah. walk in and be like, okay, I have to pull dresses. It's like, there are a thousand dresses in this room. Yeah. Right. <laughs> It depends on the person like Laura. She was uh, she was one who was like she tried on, I think, five dresses and she was done. And that was it. (laughs) And then I've had other brides who needed to try on like 50 and they still didn't find one that felt right. Every person is super different. I only went to one store and I was done, too. Um, But yeah, I, I would say like the sweet spot is probably like max nine in an appointment. Yeah. And then how do you go about What like when you're in the store and somebody walks in and they don't know any like, do you want them to tell you? I'm just thinking like if you walk into a store and you have no idea, like you got engaged three days ago and you're like, I'm inspired to walk into a dress shop and let's do this. (laughs) Like, what do you do with someone that has no idea? Because I'm sure you must have had a couple of those people. They're just like deer in the headlights. Yeah. Honestly, nobody has any idea. Like wedding dresses are not something (laughs) that you like regularly try on before you get engaged. That's not, I mean, that's the thing that I don't encourage people to do. It's really annoying when people do that. Um, So most of the time when you walk in, once you're engaged, that's the first time you're ever trying on wedding dresses. So you don't know anything. You don't know what looks good on you. You don't know what you like. And that's fine. That's a great place to start. So for me, it was more about just making the appointment really fun, letting people like see the dresses the way that I see them. So being like, don't get freaked out over a ball gown. Like it's not a cupcake dress. Try it on just because the girl on say yes to the dress looks crazy and it doesn't mean you will. (laughs) Like just my whole thing with it coming on, coming, working with someone like that was always just get drawn to whatever you're drawn to. And then I will hone in for you once I start seeing what you're gravitating towards. She's the dress whisperer. She is. That's me. Yes. I love it. Oh my gosh. I do. I have to tell you, like, I think you and I both have very, like, like very different we we didn't do any sort of going to I guess you went to one dress shop. I went to one. Yeah. I 
I knew the first dress that I tried on was the dress, but just for shits and giggles, I tried on a couple more yeah. just to make sure I was like, yeah, no, this is, that's, that's the one. Did you know going in that you wanted to try on that specific dress or do oh, you have yeah. a style? Oh, you went in like with a mission. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Whereas I was too intimidated, probably due to say yes to the dress. I was too scared <laughs> to even go into a shop. And quite frankly, when I was planning my wedding, I was capital B broke. Like I was in yeah. <laughs> to a man who was finishing up law school so not only does he not have money he just has like a pile of debt you know what I mean yeah. and I'm just scrambling to keep you know my rent paid and everything like that so I ended up taking a gift card that I had left over from J Crew that I got as a Christmas gift and I got one of those dresses off of J Crew. <laughs> Those wedding gowns, like a hundred, it was a hundred dollars. Well, you say that it was a hundred dollars. It was a nice mm -hmm. dress. It didn't fit me because I'm so tall. <gasps> so my friend's mother added a panel and then and like made it so that it worked with the the band around it. The little like uh, mm -hmm. what do you call it? the bow mm -hmm. the sash sash sash. Mm -hmm. Um, so embarrassing getting clothing things wrong in front of her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like that's so like the idea that's why I'm kind of like thinking about like people being intimidated going in because I was so intimidated that I never even went. I was too scared. Really? Yes. People get so intimidated. Like I get pe like I used to have like brides who would have panic attacks in the dressing room. Yeah. And I was just like, hon, it's not that serious. <laughs> like, yeah, right. It's, it's OK. My best friend, she's engaged right now and she just went wedding dress shopping and we were about to walk into the shop. She's like, Kennedy, I'm going to throw up. I'm like, OK, throw up up like go ahead <laughs> like, it's, it's all right like it's it's just a dress like it's okay that's a good point yes it it's just a dress it's, it's just okay a, it's just a dress and I will I it's do think looking dress. back I think one of the intimidations was the price and I wish I just gone into a store that was like maybe like a lower price store and just said this is my budget and just see what they have you know what I mean yeah. I wish I had just done the thing looking back I do have a little bit of regrets because it would have been fun just to go try it on. Yeah, I did. I have done like the whole trying a bunch of dresses for like going to other people's weddings though. So yeah. And again, I'm so tall. Half the stuff does not fit me. <laughs> but it's really fun. <laughs> I end up in these like, again, cupcake things. I'm like, I'll try on anything. <laughs> when I wasn't the bride, apparently fun. I get brave. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, um, I guess um, what are some tips you can give to brides that are making appointments and going to dress shops about what to do? Or how do you even go about making an appointment? How do you narrow down? Like, there's so much stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think the most important thing is to like understand what your budget gets you. So I, I think a lot of people, what they do is they pick their dream dress and then they figure out their budget after that. And it's like, you know, mm. dresses are expensive. I think the average dress in California costs $5,000. It's very expensive, but honestly, bridal in itself is couture. And so $5,000 for a couture piece is actually on the lower end, three to 5,000, but you get a lot of brides who come in and they expect all the bells and whistles for three to $5,000, which is a lot in the grand scheme of things. But when it comes to fashion is actually on the lower end. So like trying to come in with a budget at $500 and going into like a boutique is not going to get you very far. So having a really good understanding of what your budget is, where you're comfortable, and then working within that budget, I think is so important. And it helps like prevent a lot of heartbreak in the long run. Um, and then the other biggest thing is just don't bring too many people with you, especially people who you like don't really like. What I mean by that is like, don't bring the bridesmaid who's always being passive aggressive towards you. Like, don't bring like your sister who has never liked anything you've ever worn. Like bring someone. <laughs> yeah who's going to make you feel good in whatever you're wearing. It's a really stressful process and you don't need people there like adding on to your stress. That's a really good point. What about um, also being, you know, aware of your body type and what might look yeah. good and, you know, like, you know, I, not everybody looks great in a mermaid, you know? Well, I think it's also just like, what are you comfortable in? And maybe that is like, That's is true. that just the dress shop, just trying on? Yeah. Um, I mean, t to be frank, like dress shops, especially in LA, they suck when it comes to sizing. Like it's a battle to try and get them to get anything that's above a size six. And sometimes the size six is like, don't fit me. And I'm not a size six. And I just think that's ridiculous. But, I'm sorry. Like, we have to pause have... to tell you that our jaws are open. As yeah, you say like, this. I, we have to yeah. pick our jaws up size off the six. ground. What? It's wow. Just like, it's really frustrating when you, because the average bride is 
not a size, even a size six. They're like closer to a size 10, 12. So I, I always tell brides, I'm like, just tell the shop ahead of time what your normal dress size is so that they know and they can have prepared for you samples that will fit you. Um, there's a lot of shops in LA now that are curve specific. So like Della Curve is a great one and they're 18 plus. All their sa- sample sizes are 18 plus. They don't carry anything under a size 18, which is wonderful. Um, but when it comes to body type and wedding dresses, I find that wedding dresses don't follow the same rules that a lot of like regular clothing does. So like, I find that like short girls end up looking really nice in ball gowns that sometimes bustier women look really great in slip dresses. Like a lot of times, the only way you know what a wedding dress is going to look like on you is to try it on. So even if like you've tried on seven mermaids in the past and they didn't look good on you, that eighth one might look great. You just never know. So don't like discount anything, but let them know ahead of time if you feel like you're going to be outside of the sample size range. That's a good tip. That's, that's yeah. She wow. knows what she's doing. LA. Come on. <laughs> I'm I mean, a professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking earlier briefly that, um, and we'll get into this when we get into how you got into influencing, but a lot of times you say you're inspired by, you know, trying to find dresses that sort of go along with like you had what's the Marvel characters right yeah, the other day that was so cute yeah like can you talk a little bit about how you kind of think like that so that people you know because I think a lot of times they're just kind of a blank page when you walk in like maybe people should be taking the idea of like the venue they're going to or in- interest that they're bringing into the wedding and how they can add that to picking out a gown yeah yeah um I think what a lot of times happens with wedding dresses specifically is people like they forget to inject their own sense of style into it because you like your wedding style and your street style aren't always the same thing. And we spend our entire lives trying to figure out our street style, but we have what, like three months to figure out our wedding style. So sometimes it's nice to think about like, okay, if I'm an edgier person, how can I translate that into a wedding dress? Does that mean that I'm going to go more daring on the neckline? Does that mean I'm going to have like a higher slit? Does that mean I'm going to go crazy with like the architecture of the actual gown itself? So like thinking about, okay, what about me do I want represented in the dress itself? Um, And when it comes to like Marvel and stuff like that, I really love taking those kinds of challenges because a lot of people, I I always get comments where people are like, I don't know why this works, but it does. And that's the whole thing is like, I'm not trying to pick wedding dresses that looks like the costume that this character wore. I'm trying to pick a wedding dress that I think this character would pick if they went wedding dress shopping. Oh, cool. And that's why a lot of people, when they watch the videos, they're like, yeah, I get it. (laughs) That's so cool. So um, since we talked about a little bit before about the fact that you are now an influencer, how did you go from working in wedding dress shops to jumping into becoming more of a bridal influencer? Mostly on Instagram, right? Uh, TikTok is my biggest platform. Actually. Really? I'm a, now? I'm a TikToker. It's so interesting <laughs> how everyone's making the jump. Yeah, I'm a geriatric TikToker, but still a TikToker. (laughs) But also, Um, let's be real. The Instagram algorithm now is such garbage. Oh, it's yeah. And it's all video based, which is like not my favorite because like I do still find a lot of love in photos. But um, yeah, COVID hit and I was sitting in a showroom full of dresses, bored out of my mind because like there was no brides coming in. My whole job was effectively just shipments back and forth and like working with brides online. But I had all these beautiful dresses that were just kind of sitting there. And TikTok was the new big thing. Everyone was like, you have to get on TikTok. Like you're going to get addicted to it. And I did. Um, <laughs> and so I was on there watching all the fashion videos and I was like, oh, it'd be fun to do some of these trends with wedding dresses. And so I made a couple of videos and they just, they blew up. They, it was like outrageous. I was like driving home from the showroom and it was already at like a hundred thousand likes, like not even views likes. Wow. And I was like looking at my now husband, I was like, I'm famous. Like this is <laughs> blowing up. Um, and so we just went back and we were like, maybe we can try and recreate that success, made another video, then another, then another. And it's just like kept going. People just really, really wanted to see this type of content and like not a lot, still not a lot of people are doing it. And at this point, I'm still the largest bridal influencer. And like some people even consider me to be the first. I don't know if I would consider me to be the first, um, but I think I'm definitely like the first to a lot of people. 
That's fun. I love that. I know it's kind of outrageous. Just stumbling into it. <laughs> well, it's cool yeah. that so when you when you were first starting out, you're just using dresses just in the shop where you're working. So you're just yeah. bored, just hanging out at work, popping on the 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 ones that'll fit. <laughs> the size Exa- six exactly the fit. ones that'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> so then um do you end up do you still work for bridal shops or are you just full on influencing all the time? No, I do it just myself. It's just me. Yeah, I wanted to be able to work. So when you work in a bridal shop, the hard part about it is you can only work with the brands that are in that bridal shop. And so I wanted a little bit more flexibility, a little more freedom. And so I went and did my own thing. And I've just been able to do my own thing ever since. That's so fun. I know. That's really cool. What a random job. What a difference than working for the DOJ, man. That's definitely a. Oh, I know. (laughs) I know. I literally like my senior year, I was writing my thesis on like the Rwandan genocide. And now I'm making wedding dresses based off Marvel characters. Like, you know, (laughs) who knew? Never know where you're going to end up. (laughs) Right. So um, let's get back to uh, the fact that you got you got married recently. I did. So you're in the wedding industry, but you said mm-hmm. you would never get married when you were a kid. When did you guys start actually talking about like, maybe we're going to do this? Yeah. So I always like to say like, I'm not really a wedding person. I'm a bridal person. Like I definitely am like a fashion person who like has an emphasis in bridal. And like, I still kept that with me even while me and my husband were dating. And we were together six years before we got engaged, which is like kind of a while. Um, we just, we always said we were like, when we first started dating, we said, we're going to consider getting married when we turn 26 and not a day earlier. If we don't want to do it, then we'll reassess when we're 30. And if we don't want to do it, then we'll never do it. And then we turned 26, it rolled around. And I was like, we were kind of like, you know, does getting married make sense? Is it something we want to do? And we both were like, yeah, it makes sense for us. Like where we are right now, financially, like socially, like it just makes sense. And so we decided to get married. Did, was there like a proposal? Or was yeah. it just like a, a conversation? Oh, yeah. just like, oh no, was it been fine if that was? Yeah. It's totally kind. No, but the way that I said it definitely made it sound like it was like a business. We like sat down with meeting <laughs> we like notes. shook no. hands and then walked into <laughs> we the like, courthouse. We're moving forward. Okay. Meeting adjourned. No. Um, no, we. But it's funny. Def- no, I will say it is interesting how like we all think about like romance and the, and you know, the big like proposal and stuff. But before the proposal, most people, especially now this modern age where, I mean, you talking about the wet like you have real tangible conversations about as you should yeah. finances yes. and what are we doing right now and what do you want in the future do you want ch- blah 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 yeah like I think about yeah. by the time we got around to actually proposing like uh, how many of us are really shocked you know what I mean like I guess yeah. shocked in the moment maybe but you yeah. know it's so funny that before then there's very like grown-up you know serious conversations yes. that are to other people very boring but to you very important you know you're talking about yeah. personal finances and where are we gonna live and what do you want to do in 10 years like it's crazy mm-hmm. but now well, i want to hear my go ahead yeah me and my husband we we had lived together we actually like this is ridiculous we moved in together like three weeks after we met and we've lived together ever since and we wow. were both, yeah we were both just like this is it like we knew we almost felt very married and so for us it was more of a like we're only going to get married if we feel like that's going to add something to our relationship dynamic. But like, it's not a necessity for us. We still feel like and acknowledge and know that we're going to be together forever, regardless. Like we've always seen each other as end game. So for us, the proposal wasn't really like, oh, like it's a declaration of our love. It was more of a like, oh, this is like the next step in our relationship kind of thing. Yeah. Um, But yeah, no, he, he bought a ring And it was the ring that I wanted. Like I had a very specific ring that I wanted. And for whatever reason, he bought the ring. And like next day, like a bloodhound, I was like, there's a ring in this house. I was like, (laughs) there's a ring in here. And I know it. And he was like, no, there's no ring. And then this man took like seven months. He had this ring for like six, seven months. And I was like, where's the ring? I know it's in this house. (laughs) give it to me. And he was like, he was, he, he gets in his head and he wanted to do the perfect proposal. And I was like, Harrison, I don't care about the proposal. Just give me the ring. <laughs> and so we're sitting on the couch and I was like, babe, I know it's here. I know it's here. 
let's just get engaged. Let's just do it. And he was like, okay. He went and got got the ring and he was like, I don't know how you knew, but here it is. Well, he didn't say here it is. He like, it was in a really cute little box that was like, when you opened it, it plays a song from my favorite movie. And the ring is like nestled next to it. Very sweet. What's your favorite movie? It's Spirited Away. It's a Studio yes. Ghibli movie. Oh, yeah, yes. I love that movie. And it's the it's the song in Spirited Away, and like it opens and it plays it, and he just like held the box out to me, and I was like, oh, so unexpected. I mean, like, <laughs> and, uh, I said yes, and then we went out to dinner, and like that was it. <laughs> that's oh amazing gosh, that's so funny i love that you could sense it yes, within the house I knew, that's like I just a knew. lord of the rings thing are they gonna like feel the ring mm-hmm. nearby yeah <laughs> he yeah he like tells everyone he's like i don't know he's like i put submit on the credit card payment and she was like where is it <laughs> like, I immediately knew <laughs> that's crazy I also like the fact that you were smart enough to be like I have this eye for fashion and design I'm not just gonna let you wing it with the ring this no. is specifically the type of this ring that I, I would want. like yeah that's smart I get it yeah I mean that was like for me I had like such specific things that I wanted with the ring yeah and like I'm the one who's gonna have to wear it forever sure so I, I was like true. if you if you don't want me changing it later just let me pick it <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I've known, a, a good point. I've known a lot of people that have done that. And I think it's smart. You know what I mean? Like, again, you have these logistical conversations beforehand mm-hmm. and that could be one yeah. of them. I think it's totally cool. Did you know ahead of time? No. Oh, okay. Did, well, how did he do? He's not, he's not listening. <laughs> he did great. No, he, he did. Let it me exactly. see that thing. It's been a while. Ooh, yeah. Show, show the zoom. Ooh, la la. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. He did good. Yeah. He, he got really your style good. down. He did without asking. I don't know. He didn't ask you. No, I I was completely <laughs> shocked. Well, I said that she went to she was in Paris on vacation. And I was like, you're totally getting engaged. And she was like, no, I'm not. I'm like, girl, you're going to Paris. Like, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, he didn't tell me I had a thing. But he is a very style. He's a stylish guy. He's yeah. got a good eye for stuff. He's a director. Like, he does. He, yeah. he knows what's up. Yeah. Yeah. He got it. He got it right. That's cool. I got my uh, husband's grandmother's just not her engagement ring, but just a random ring that she just had, which I oh. liked for two reasons. One, I knew I wouldn't be wearing it every day. Right now, I'm not wearing my engagement ring because I can't handle it. I, I snag my I, I'm too much of a spaz to handle it. <laughs> so he knew that about me. But also he knew again, because we're talking about this boy who was in law school. I was like, do not spend a dime on a ring. Like yeah. we are already dealing with so much financial debt from your school. <laughs> You hold on to all the cash you can, bro. <laughs> so when he showed me the ring, I was like, oh, and then I was like reminded. I was like, it's my family ring. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> that's really sweet. I love that though. I love family rings. Yeah. I think that's like one of my favorite kinds of engagement rings is when a bride comes in and they're like, this is my fiance's grandmother's. And we're just like, oh, they yeah. love you. really sweet. Yeah. I, I will. I have to tell you the part of the story, though, is that she was a she had already passed by the time I come into his life. So I never met her. But she was a very tiny woman. Like my husband is very big. guy. He's like six, three. His mother is like, I mean, maybe five, four. She's she's teeny. And his grandmother was even smaller. So even though it was technically her ring, we, we had to get it resized because he went to put it. It wouldn't even fit around my first knuckle of my pinky. <laughs> So they just they just built him smaller back in the day. Yes. So he's like trying to put it on, and then he goes, "Well, I guess it's not going to fit." And then he called me Fat Hands McGee. I'm like, "We've been oh. engaged for eight seconds. Oh, <laughs> you're not even married yet, and divorced Fat immediately. Hands Rude. Hands McGee. That's right. I did laugh because it was funny, <laughs> and it's true. Like I played sports when I was younger, so I have like very fat knuckles from like having like my yeah. my, my my fingers, fingers jammed. jammed. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that ring was not going on. <laughs> Oh man, I love it. So you yes. go out to dinner. Do you remember where you went out to dinner? Is it? Is it we went to this mind? place. It's called Piccadilly, and I joke with him that the only reason he proposed to me was so we could go back to Piccadilly. We had like an excuse to <laughs> because we had gone like the week before, and it was just the most intense. Me and my husband, we love food. Like we have a deep like that's we bond over food. And the week before, we had gone to this restaurant. And just had like a religious experience with like the food there. And so then he proposed and he was like, we should go to Piccadilly now to celebrate. And I was like, that was the hidden agenda in all of this. Sneaky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, okay, so now you're engaged. You yes. are, like you said, you're more of into like bridal gown, bridal, not really wedding, wedding person. You, what yeah. are you doing? Are you even planning the wedding at this point or just like engaged was enough? What's the timeline between engaged and, and married? Yeah, so we started kind of planning. Um, we were going to pay for it ourselves and we are not homeowners. Like we, you know, are still paying off cars and stuff. And I just couldn't wrap my head around spending thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on a wedding that I didn't even really want to have, especially because like I have been in the industry so long. I know all the options that are out there. What I wanted was like a $150,000 wedding. I was not going to pay for a $150,000 wedding, but I also didn't really want to have a $20,000 wedding that I was like compromising so much on. So we just, we like called to our, my maid of honor and his best man. And we're like, we're booking a plane ticket to Vegas in a month. Yes. And they were like, cool, let's do it. Um, I got my dress from a vintage shop. He got his tux from men's warehouse. I got my maid of honor and my best man, all their outfits. We went to Vegas. My maid of honor texted both of our families the day before and sends a zoom link and says, Kennedy and Harrison are getting married. Uh, th at this time, <laughs> They don't have their phones on them. If you have any questions, you can direct them to me and they'll get their phones back after the ceremony tomorrow. Wow. Um, Brilliant. I love so, this. Is, I like it. I yes. like it a lot. So we went to the Little White Chapel. It was adorable. Um, and then the we Little went to The Little White Caesar. Chapel? <laughs> it was for Benefer 2.0. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I did it first. Uh, and then we went to Caesar's Palace to the buffet, which was both of our favorite parts of the wedding. Love. <laughs> um, we got the little like mini individual like desserts and that was our wedding cake. Uh, Aww. And then we flew home that night. That night? Yeah, we flew in at like midnight the day before and then got up at like 8 a.m., went, got our marriage license, got married, ate, and then flew home. I flew home in my wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's oh, a flex. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and how did the family react? Um, they were not surprised at all. Like everybody was very like, of course, like they're going to do that. Of course. And so some of our family now has been like, oh, well, you should have a bigger ceremony. I'm like, I would love to have a bigger ceremony if y'all are paying for it. Mm -hmm. I shall not <laughs> um, because it would be entirely for you all. So if you, you can either help us pay for a house or help us pay for a wedding. But I'm not doing a wedding until I have a house. So up to you. <laughs> In this economy, there man, you go. it's not a yeah, bad idea. No. <laughs> well, also, I feel like, you know, I'm sure having you lived through the trauma of all the weddings being canceled back in 2020, yeah. there's probably a little bit in the back of your mind of being like, I don't want to plan all this stuff and invest all this money and potentially lose deposits or things get changed yeah. or the last minute half the people don't feel like coming. Like it gets, it's really still the roll of the dice, you know? It is. And we're, so, we've been so COVID conscious, like both of us worked from home the entirety of like the peak of the pandemic, like all this stuff. So we just didn't even want to start planning before we knew it was going to be incredibly safe. And for us, that means like pandemic is over, over. Yeah. Um, and our families are huge. Like our guest list, we sat down, just our families was like 140 people. Oh, and yeah. so... <laughs> For us, we were just like, there's no even point of planning it because we just know that this is probably not going to happen for a while. Yeah, that's smart. Um, I do have a question, though, because you kind of breezed over it. You're a girl who loves some wedding dresses. And you were like, yeah, but I'm at a vintage shop. Anyway, right? on to the next topic. Oh, yeah. I'm like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. Let's hear more about this dress. How you, yeah. the person who loves bridal, figured out what dress she was going to wear on her wedding day. Yeah, I went fairly tame um, just because I, you know, Harrison's so supportive and I figured on my wedding day, I should probably wear something that he'd like, um, despite wanting to wear something a little bit more, you know, crazy and interesting. Uh, but I, I knew that I wanted vintage. I knew that I wanted designer. Um, that was really important to me. So I went to happy Isles, which is in LA and it's like this great vintage shop. They have a great selection and there was this gown and it was on the rack. And I was like, Oh, that kind of looks like a Mar It looks like the dress that Marilyn Monroe wore when I don't know if you've seen it where like, um, she, like her dress is flying up and she's standing over the sewer grate or yeah. and mm -hmm. that whole the thing. Seven -year itch. Yeah. 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 
And she was like, oh, yeah, it is. It's a William Trevia. It's the man who designed that dress. It's from the same collection. Whoa. Um, and so I pulled it out and I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is it. And so he wore like a like a brownish tweed suit that's supposed to look like her love interest's um, suit in the seven year itch. And we kind of like went based off of that. And I wore these like gold earrings that have their like little hands with like red painted nails because like Marilyn always had like the red painted nails and the red painted lips or whatever. And then the pearl, cause she was like really big into the pearl earrings. So it was like an homage sort of like to that movie and to like her style was like sort of the inspiration for the dress. That is so cool. I love it. We knew yes. there was a story there. We're going to also, <laughs> we're going to beg you to send us a photo that we can oh, share sure. with oh, our listeners. Oh, it's all over my Instagram. Okay, yeah, good, good, like, good. Because we it have everywhere. to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, our listeners now after hearing this, be like, we need mm-hmm. to see a photo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know this is an audio medium, but you know. <laughs> it's all right. We got to get in there with the visual sometimes. Okay, so sure. also, you said that you wore the dress on the plane on the way home. Did people notice? Did you get any special treatment? Are you trying to play yeah. that bride card? I'd be like, how do I get yeah. some free champagne out of this? So funny you say that. So I walked onto the plane and they're like, wow, you you look so nice. And I was like, I just got married. And they were <laughs> like, oh my gosh. And so it was so funny because we bought the cheapest tickets possible. So me and my husband were not sitting next to each other on the flight back. <laughs> um and Romance. the guy was like, do you want to switch seats with me? I was like, I'm not going to be that person. Like, no, we can sit where we were assigned. It's fine. <laughs> and so the flight attendant comes by and she has this huge bottle. Of, it's a it's a 45 minute flight from Vegas to L.A. Yeah, it's so very she quick. This whole bottle of champagne wrapped in like this napkin. And she like hands it to me. And she's like, congratulations. I was like, oh, my God, thank you. Um, but we don't really drink. So I was like, oh, thanks. I'm going to take it. But what we did is the the napkin that it was wrapped in, we actually like framed that napkin and it's like it's in our living room. And then we gave like the champagne to a friend. So Oh, that was- that's nice. Aww. That's sweet. Such that's a fun experience. That's really cool. Yeah. I wish you didn't sit next to each other. On the- <laughs> <laughs> that being said, sometimes by the end of a vacay, it's kind of nice for some solo time. Yeah, they just got married. Just like, I'm just saying it was a stressful <laughs> 24 hours, you know, yeah, to have of also, like you said, that flight is so fast that like you literally get up in the air. They barely have time to pass out drinks and take them away. Yeah. From you. Oh, yeah. Like if there's it's any quick. turbulence or weather, they're just like, you're skipping it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is just like, whoop, whoop. Mm. <laughs> I was literally like, we have the rest of our lives together. I can spend 45 minutes next to this guy. Like, it's fine. (laughs) Did you do a honeymoon? No, we did like a a mini moon in Palm Springs a few weeks ago. Um, No, we didn't really do one. We're so weird. I was like, we were like, we don't like to travel because we live in LA. There's so many cultures right here. Why am I going to go to Korea? Koreatown is right there. Why am I going to go to China? Chinatown is right there. Like I could hop and skip down to Mexico. Like for us, I was like, I just want to stay home for like a week with you. And that's going to be fine with me. That's nice. It's sweet. It is yeah. true. So Cal's, there's so many cool things. Very a lot. little driving so distance. Much. Yeah. That's so cute. Oh, I love that story. That's a good <laughs> wedding story. I know. Um, I am glad that also. So the Zoom happened. Do you have a recording of the Zoom? I do. Okay. I do, yeah. Have you ever watched it? No. No one ever watches their, their wedding videos. I was do there. Do you watch I yours? The memories. No, because my husband who works in production has not put it together yet. Yeah. Multiple <laughs> people shot my wedding for me. I've never seen any of the yeah. videos. <laughs> Yeah, I have stills and that's enough. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I did not watch it. Yeah, it's interesting. We were um, interviewing someone uh, a couple weeks ago. Rushi came on and Mm -hmm. she was talking about she uh, she was a a bride that then turned into a wedding planner. But she specializes in uh, Indian um, weddings happening in America. So a lot of like Southeast Asian style weddings. And one of the cool things that she said was just kind of a standard for like people that she's gone to weddings for and her, her own wedding is that there's a videographer filming on the day of and then during your reception, like while people are eating, there's somebody quickly editing and then they show a video on screen for everyone in the reception of what just happened that day what wild wild isn't that intense 
That is, I mean, what? I mean, what skill it takes to just run through all that footage and be like, boom, 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 boom. I know. That's like an NFL like replay, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a live cut. It's mm-hmm. impressive, right? Isn't that cool? I love that. I know. You're, I was like, you're the only person that's ever seen their wedding video. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so now we're to the point where we ask the question, uh, what was the best part of your whole wedding experience and what was the worst? I know it's a really like, short window. Yeah. <laughs> my like three month planning process and my one day wedding. Um, the best part was, this is like really funny. Um, it w- it was just hilarious. We were running late to the to the ve- to the venue to the little white chapel. It's not even a venue, um, and it was me and my maid of honor, my husband and his best man are already at the chapel. And we get into the taxi, and I'm like, I'm running late. I'm getting married. And the taxi driver looks at me and he goes, "I got you." He puts on four minutes to the end of the world, or like that one Justin Timberlake song, where oh, it's like yeah. four minutes. Yeah, literally, and he just books it, and he gets us there. And, like, <laughs> Five minutes and me and my maid of honor are in the back like what is happening and I have a video of it it's so funny and that was like one of my best memories from that it was just hilarious um the worst genuinely like I didn't I don't really have a bad memory from like the process because it was so short and like so fast um, I don't really have a worse, which is like the cheesiest, like worst thing to say. I'm so sorry. No, it's but fine. like I really don't have like a super bad thing that happened. Well, I think that you sort of eliminated most options where the worst would show up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and you also said you had support of your family, which eloping, yeah. you know, can be 50 50 on that. True. That usually the worst has to do with a person being a butthead. <laughs> yeah it's an yeah, ongoing, for ongoing sure. theme in our confessionals you're right and someone's acting like a butthead. a butthead i never say the word butthead but now i'm gonna say it all the time because it makes you <laughs> giggle <laughs> as promised we have returned we're here we're here for you <laughs> aww I'm here for you, Pammy. It's like that Friends theme song. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So we're going to get into some bridal breaks. Yes. Um, Bridal breaks for any of our newer listeners are not only for brides, but for grooms or anyone helping to plan a wedding of fun things that have nothing to do with wedding planning. Nothing. So take a break. Stop stressing out about that coconut water that you don't want to drink. (laughs) <laughs> and um uh have a little bridal break with us pam usually does a cocktail yes i do some pop culture and who knows what else so uh pammy what is your bridal break for today well you know we are we are deep into summer and even though i grew up in southern california and i you're making faces i'm making faces because my noise is making guys i'm so sorry my chair (laughs) let me explain you guys my chair is making noises right and it's been making noises for the last few episodes i don't know if any of you have noticed i've tried my best to edit it out repeatedly tristan has tried to fix the noise and every time he goes to fix the noise he can't find that there's a noise (laughs) and then every time we start recording it's like (laughs) Oh my so goodness. I'm making a noise because I'm mad because I shifted my butt. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know, guys. It's giving me a complex. I'm just like, wow, this pandemic weight has now oh affected the chairs. No. <laughs> it's all good. We love ourselves whatever sides we are. Absolutely. So let's get to drinking because I ain't stopping <laughs> that. Pre-pandemic, post-pandemic. Okay, so, so summer storms. And, you yes. know, I grew up in Southern California and we very rarely get a summer storm. Oh. They are such a big deal. Summer storms, yeah, where I was from. Yes. Every afternoon. Yes. Every afternoon. They're so, they're so nice. I love them. They're very dramatic. The refreshing, you know. But anyway, so this is a dark and stormy first summer storm. Yes. Which is... Just three ingredients, Mm -hmm. ginger beer, lime, and rum. Ginger beer is such a great mixer. It's so good. It's so spicy. It's got a little kick to it. I can have it it on its own or, you know, with anything. It's great. Yeah, it's a good non-alcoholic option, too, if you want to feel fancy. A ginger beer with lime, you still feel like you're having an adult drink. Yes. Like part of the party. I once got carded for buying ginger beer. And I'm like, "Um, it's non-alcoholic. 
dude. My <laughs> mother-in-law once we were having lunch with her and I ordered a ginger beer and she gave my my husband a look and he's like, mom. She's like, it's lunch. <laughs> And I was like, first of all, I have drunk at lunch before, so let's not <laughs> get things twisted. But today I'm not. <laughs> no yeah. alcohol in this But I one. do. I love a dark and stormy. They're fantastic. <laughs> uh, that's, a good, that's a good suggestion. You, oh. know what, you know what's funny is that my bridal break, because I'm doing two, um, mm-hmm. I decided for my second bridal break, which I'm going to do first now, is also a summery drink. Because mm. in the summer, I love to make red sangria. Oh, yeah. Love a pitcher of homemade sangria. I used to be intimidated because I would see it in a restaurant and order it. Yeah. And you see all that fruit and you're just like, this is too complicated to make at home. Turns out it's really easy. So easy. Right. So if you've ever had in a restaurant, be like, wow, this is so refreshing. And you're like, I can't possibly do this home. No, no, no. You can't. And you don't even have to use like expensive wine. No. Just get like a dry Spanish wine, Rioja, if you can. But make sure you don't get too sweet because it's going to get sweet from the other Mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, it's so easy. You make it a little bit in advance, let that fruit soak up for a couple hours. And then you look like a champ, either having people over or bringing it to a part, like bringing a pitcher of fresh made sangria mm-hmm. you look like such a great pal baller. yeah that's a baller move and it's really not that expensive because it's just um the recipe i've been using lately has been from the minimalist baker so um her recipe and it's pretty standard i will say what she does so um you're going to use apples oranges you can use brown sugar or regular sugar orange juice brandy dry spanish wine and some iced chill and that's really all it is. I also like to just throw in whatever fruits I want. So if I have some strawberries, it makes it look yeah. a little festive. Some limes, like go nuts. But yeah, the more fruit you cram in there, it just looks more exciting. <laughs> so yeah, so, so I love sangria in the summer. Me too. So yeah, so um, I highly recommend that. Um, my pop culture um, bridal break for the week is Loot on Apple TV or Apple Plus, whatever the television. It's just Apple TV, right? Mm-hmm. Is the the app for Apple. It's too many app app apps. But anyway, Apple app. Yes, but um, it is a new show starring Maya Rudolph, mm, and um, her. she plays. I'm not giving much. I'm not going to like spoil it for you. It's like the premise of the show okay. is she is married to a very wealthy tech guy, and they built their billions together, mm-hmm. and then. Out of nowhere, she's divorced. And now she has all of this money, half of the money. It's very like Jeff Bezos got divorced. Remember his wife basically is just like has billions of dollars. Yeah, Mackenzie. Yes. So it's the same kind of scenario. And this woman now has to like figure out what to do with this money. So she kind of goes into philanthropy. But in the process, kind of starts to reconnect with the real world again after spending decades with only the super wealthy mm-hmm. so it's kind of not only is it kind of interesting because Maya Rudolph's always funny and She's amazing um, but it's also kind of seeing this like kind of fish out of water but from a different perspective mm-hmm. and it's really fun to see her try to insert herself in places and think she's doing everything right and it's just like you were doing everything wrong rich person <laughs> But it's really, and also on top of, obviously, she's really funny and the scenario is kind of interesting, is that she's still super wealthy. So you have like real estate porn the entire time. Like the home that they're filming in is like crazy and like cool jets and like yachts. So like every shot, you know, when she's acting like a rich person Mm -hmm. is like lifestyle of the rich and famous. Like it's very cool looking. It's beautifully shot and she's so funny. And um, it's I think at this point, by the time this airs, I think there's like five or six episodes out, but they're 30 minutes. They're just like comedies. So you're going to blast through them. Oh, nice. And it's super cute. And it is on Apple. Loot. Nice. That sounds fun. And now that we're done with the bridal breaks, Pammy, what's the last thing we got to do? Um, Say goodbye. No, 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 no. We don't say goodbye yet. There's a very important part in the middle. It's called the quiz, the informational <laughs> quiz that informs the listeners of all the different ways that they can get in contact with us. But right. also it simultaneously works your brain and working your memorization you. skills. <laughs> I'm just making sure we're keeping your brain sharp. Oh, this is this all is, for me. Yes, this is Thank mental you. health. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need it. <laughs> So, Pammy, yes. can you tell the listeners what our website is? Weddingconfessionals.com. From there, you can find all of our links to where we are on social media. Where can you find us on social media? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and uh, TikTok. 
also from there, you can find our show notes. So anything we're talking about in the podcast, um, we will have the notes there for all the episodes. Um, Pammy, we would love for people to share their confessionals with us. Yes. They're anonymous. Absolutely. We will not share any of your information unless the information you put out. I mean, listen, if you wrote it out, we're going to say it, but we're not going to give right. away your name. We're not going to tell you where you're from. Like Mm-mm. we'll be very anonymous. So you can share we don't know. secrets. Yeah, we don't know. We don't need to know. No. Nope. Tell us what you need to know. Tell us your gossip. Um, so there are a couple different ways that you can share your confessionals with us. There is an email address. What's the email address? Weddingconfessionals at gmail.com. There is a phone number you can leave a voicemail. We transcribe it. We don't use your voice. Again, very, very anonymous. What is the phone number? 434-933-2663. Boom. Also, if you go to our website, click on the tab that says... Tell us your secret. Tell us your secret from there. We don't need your phone number or Mm -hmm. your email address. Nope. Just a form. There's a little box that says name. So easy. You just put whatever you want. They're creative names we love. Yes. And then under there, there's a bigger box where you write in the confessional. Just let it flow. Yes. Get nice. and Give me the juicy details. Tell me everything. Like dear diary. Just yes. let it out. Dear diary. Let it all out. We're here for you. <laughs> Let's get to it. Um, so Pammy, we would love for people to give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Yeah. So if you're listening right now on either one of those platforms... Give us some five stars. Give us some love. Yeah. Love love us. Because we love you. We do. And I love you, Pam. Oh, I love you too, Greggy. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to show you my love by asking you <laughs> where else you can find our podcast. Besides Apple Podcasts, there are two others that start with the letter A. What are they? Amazon and Audible. Two with the letter C. Castro. Cast, that's both of them together. Castbox uh-huh. and Castro. Yes. Two with D. Downcast and Deezer. One with G. Google. One with I. iHeartRadio. One with O. Overcast. One with L. Listen notes. Okay. Eight with P. Let's see if today's the day. <laughs> Podcast Land. Yes. Podcast Republic. Yes. Podcast Attic. Correct. Podbean, Pocket Cast, Podtail, Player FM, and... Why is there always one? Because eight's a lot. Oh, my God. And they're all very, very similar. Everyone is in their cars screaming. I know. That's not helping. Because they're all rooting for you. Maybe I'm not. I am. <laughs> At least I'm getting to seven. It was six for a long time. No, and it's now true. Now I'm getting to seven. Are you officially giving up? She has her hands on her hips and she scrunched her did little brows. Did I say brows. podcast paradise? You did not. <gasps> ding, 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 ding. You did it. You did it. Do, 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 do. I'm so proud of myself. You should be. <laughs> now you have to do the other ones. Do you even know them? <laughs> uh, Republic. Okay. Is it? One with an R. Republic. Radio Public. Radio Public. Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube. I'm not going to make you do it anymore. You did a lot. Oh. She's leaning back. Oh, my God. Like a marathoner who just came across the finish line <laughs> in the corner vomiting. <laughs> <laughs> also, use your voice. Use the lecture Siri. Just say, play the Wedding Confessionals podcast. Pammy. Yay. What a day. I feel good. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> it only took you 134 episodes. <laughs> We have not been doing this for that long. (laughs) Thank you very much. Very proud of you. (laughs) You're doing it. You're going to get through all of it very, very soon. Eventually. That's the big day. It is. It's a big day. I might go have a... She has spent... I might go have a sangria now. She needs to lay down. Or dark and stormy. (laughs) Yes. Celebrate. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So that is it, Pammy. So we will be back for part two next week. Yes. With Kennedy. So fun. Yeah. Those confessionals are good. You definitely want to return. Absolutely. Okay. I'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Special thanks to Andy Schreier for our adorable theme song. And David Kancherwitz for our fantastic logo. And Ramsey Millette and Brian Maylard for their technical support. If you want to learn more about our show, where you got to go, Pam? Check out our website, weddingconfessionals.com. That's it, girl. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.